my tech speed, actually. Wait, what? I, I would, would like, like a skip button. button. After you, we need, need a skip button. button. I said I, said I wanted, I wanted to get a skip button. button. And you know, you know what? what? Still, still fucking want one. one. Hello and welcome to another video on my channel Pokepidge. Yes, you saw correctly. We now have a skip button. My dream has come true. It only took 21 years, but finally, a skip button in a Pokemon game. This is just one of many new features introduced in the Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee games, and I'm going to go through a few for you today. There are so many additions and so many improvements in these games, and I cannot wait to tell you all about them. So, I might as well begin. Without further skidoo, Let's get into it. First up, we have the secret techniques replacing HMs. As you can see here, instead of the HM of cut, we now have chop down to easily get through those trees. And as well as this, we now have sky dash instead of fly. This means that Eevee or Pikachu can summon some helium balloons and fly you away using a sort of fan handle thing. And it's actually pretty awesome to look at. We also now have Sea Skim instead of Surf. This now means that you can summon yourself a surfboard and join Eevee or Pikachu on there. It's a great reference to the surfing Pikachu we've had before. And instead of the HM Strength, we now have Strong Push. This basically means that Eevee or Pikachu can use their tail to hit a massive rock right out of the way. Oh, hey Diglett, what you got for us? Oh, thanks for the nugget. And remember HM05 Flash? The annoying HM you had to teach someone? Well, that is now replaced with Light Up. Eevee or Pikachu will light up the area so that you can navigate around a hell of a lot more easily, but probably still run into some Zubats. As you've probably seen from the trailers, Pokemon now follow you. This makes it so much more personal and gives you a stronger bond with your Pokemon. As you can tell here, Caterpie looks very happy. It's stretching out and relaxing. There are Pokemon though that you can ride on. For example, here's what you can do with Dragonite. You can fly on it. You can fly all around towns, over gates, over buildings even. Yeah, let's just stop on this Pokemon Center. Pretty cool. The Pokemon storage system used to be 12 boxes that you could only fit 20 Pokemon in each and you had to change the box every time you caught a Pokemon. But now you have the Pokemon box basically in your bag and at any point you can swap your party round. You can catch as many Pokemon as you like and you can change them at any point. It's absolutely fantastic, it's so helpful. Also you now have a candy jar. These contain individual candies that can raise one stat. For example, this quick candy can increase your speed stat by one level, as I will show you on this Raichu. 19 to 20. Fantastic. That's there for every stat. Again, as you've probably seen in a trailer, catching is different. Pokemon appear in the overworld. I'll interact with this Tauros here and show you. Basically, no wild battles take place. You sort of go to a Pokemon Go style catching system. I'll use a Raspberry here to make Tauros a bit easier to catch. But essentially, this is pretty much it. They flee a lot easier than they used to, believe me. Hopefully, I can catch this Tauros and show you the bonuses you can get from these. Brilliant. Let's have a look. I got a successful catch, excellent throw, and a technique bonus. 799 experience points. That'll annoy the OCD people. Then all of your Pokemon will gain the experience collectively. This is how you train. Very early on in the game, east of Vermilion City, just before the third gym, you can find someone that will give you the judge function if you've registered 30 Pokemon in your Pokedex. I'll show you what the judge function is now. Basically, it will show you what the IV stats are for your Pokemon. My Weezing here has got a great special attack IV, but not a lot else going for it. My Kangaskhan here has got the best possible IV HP and defense. That's going to be hard to take down. The inclusion of Master Trainers post-game is obviously a new feature. I have shown this in a previous video where I have done Magikarp versus Magikarp, but let's have a quick look here. 
Basically, every Pokemon except the Legendaries and Ditto will have a challengeable Master Trainer, and you go on in one-on-one -on -one battles, the same Pokemon against the same Pokemon, no items allowed, to see who's better. These Pokemon, even if the levels fool you, are absolutely strong. These games have now introduced a two-player function. Your camera will focus on you and follow you, however your second player can still run around if it feels like it. It's a hell of a lot of fun, I've tried it with my brother already, it's great. You can even do two player whilst catching. Let's have a look at this lovely little Pidgey here, delightful little chap, great name. You can both throw a Pokeball at the same time, and if you synchronise it well, you can get yourself a synchronisation bonus. Brilliant, we've done it there. Let's have a look, see if we can catch this guy. Bit embarrassing if we don't. Thank God for that. And as you can tell by the bonus lists here, on here we will have the synchronization bonus. Experience points 36, thank you very much. Customizable clothing was introduced in generation 6 and we are utilizing on that, but I believe they've improved it. Instead of having random bits of clothing, you now have actual outfits. For example, I'll show you the Team Rocket outfit we've got. Let's get the cap on and then we can go down to outerwear, get the Team Rocket top on there. And, as you can tell, the entire outfit is there. You get these all at the same time, and it is wonderful. You can even dress up your partner Pokemon. Of course, you can connect these games with Pokemon Go. Essentially, what you do is pair your game with the Nintendo Switch, and select the Pokemon you want to transfer over from Pokemon Go. I'll put a Pikachu and a Sandshrew. Yeah, send them over. You click Bring Pokemon on your Nintendo Switch. Just make sure your Bluetooth is switched on for some reason. Basically click OK on Pokemon Go. And as you can tell from the description here, we can send them across quite easily. It searches for your Pokemon Go account, which you should have already paired. There I am. Click Yes. And that's it. It's sent. I've just sent three Pokemon over. It honestly is that simple. But when Pokemon are transferred from Pokemon Go to the Go Park in Pokemon Let's Go, you don't just get them automatically, you have to catch them yourself, as you can tell here with this Sandshrew. It makes it a lot more interesting and a lot more of a challenge. But for now, that's all I've got. I really think you should try these games if you haven't already. Until then, goodbye. If you're interested in little trinkets like these key rings, then please do keep up with my Facebook page, Twitter and YouTube channel. I'm going to start selling them soon. I'll even make a Pokemon of your choice. I've got Mimikyu there as an example. But if you're interested, keep an eye out.